Talking about feedback, this article, courtesy of Seth Rogen and The Guardian, is really good because it makes me think and wonder what's going on with culture right now i feel like we're living in a really interesting time with culture and creative where i feel like there's this kind of it feels like there's like a contempt that artists and creatives have with their fans and audience in general and i'll try and i'll try and make this link this is curse of the guardian it says as follows Seth Rogen, negative reviews are devastating. I know people who have never recovered. And it's an interview that he did with a really popular podcast that we have here in the UK um, with this guy called Stephen Bartlett, who's a really famous business person, entrepreneur here, who has a podcast called Diary of a CEO. So he said as follows. Um, Rogan described negative press coverage as a trade-off for success in the film industry, but said that criticism hurts everyone. I think if most critics knew how much it hurts the people that made the things that they are writing about, they would second guess the way that they write these things. It's devastating. I know people who have never recovered from it, honestly. A year, a decade of being hurt by film reviews, very personal. That's something that people carry with them literally their entire lives. I get why it fucking sucks. I want to link this to comments because I feel like nowadays... Critic reviews, especially stuff like Rotten Tomatoes, are actually looked down upon by the audience. People usually will go to Rotten Tomatoes review, and if they see the reviews from the from the journalists and from the critics to be panning it and saying it's terrible, but then the reviews from the fans saying it's brilliant, they'll go and watch it. And if they see the critics praising it, but the fans dismissing it, they'll not watch it. So actually, fans are a little bit more tuned to like realizing that. And because of comment sections and stuff. I feel like fans have now got the ability to communicate directly how they feel about something. A YouTuber puts out a video, like I love to do, you scroll down to the comments, you read what people are saying and how they've received what they've said, and you can maybe start some debates, find people to talk to, maybe you can find other creatives. It's a really cool, interesting thing. But for some reason, I feel like because these comment sections have become, it's sort of like democratized, you know, feedback and criticism and kind of empowered people on both sides, people creating the content, people kind of enjoying it. For some reason, the people that create the content are now becoming very sensitive to the idea of their fans giving them any kind of feedback or letting them know how they feel about what they've done. Sometimes fans don't give feedback. Sometimes it's not constructive. Sometimes it's just an emotion. Like, this is shit. This is good. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, reducing that as saying that, oh, this is not good criticism because it doesn't come from an educated point of view is almost dismissive, right? And I feel like, in general, it speaks to the overall sense out there that with some creators where they feel like their fans are somewhat beneath them. Like there isn't a kind of respect for the fandom, which I never really understood, especially because maybe because I've, I've been obsessed with the internet. I'm on social media all the time and I'm in forum kid and I was on chat rooms. So if, to me, harsh comments and negativity never really affected me because, you know, I've just grown up on forums where people would would rip you because of your outfit or destroy you on forums because I remember one time on a forum specifically this forum about Supreme where I didn't recognize the store window of the Supreme store in New York, one of the original locations where they had these TVs lined up, right? These, these kind of um, um, old school TVs with the backs on it, right? Really kind of nice little display where they play like skateboarding movies and shit on it. And I didn't recognize it. And I remember saying one in the forum, oh, what's the store with the TVs in the window? And some of the guys on there who at the time must have been like, in their 30s and I was maybe 18 lighting me up destroying me to the point where they were like getting at me trying to you know basically trying to e-bully me which is silly because it's the internet just turn it off and go away but just it was funny but I remember that being a thing so maybe it's kind of toughing me up to it but it's not really I never really see criticism as that as being that serious or being that deep so I just feel like in overall for whatever reason even though these people that create content do it for the fans for the most part, and you hope the fans can connect with it and make it a cult hit or make it an underground hit or just connect with it in general and just want, you know, make you inspired to do more or help you to break even. I don't know why this contempt happens. Like, what's with the contempt? It feels like people just don't respect the fan base and just dismiss it. Because I feel like this, this what he's saying about critics could more be applied to fans because fans now get the chance to say, hey, that movie sucked. They write comments and they also vote with their clicks. They vote with their views. They vote with their engagement. They just, you can tell when they don't want or like something. Um, no amount of good coverage, no amount of gaslighting, um, none of that is going to ever, ever, ever change the fact that people either like something or they don't like something. And I think fans always correct in that regard. It says here, it feels very personal rejection. He added, asked about uh, Green Hornet, the 2011 superhero movie in which Guardian critic uh, Peter Bradshaw said everything about it is disappointing. Rogan said the reviews were kind coming out and it was pretty bad people hated it and it seemed like people were taking 
liking joy and disliking it a lot but it opened at to 35 million which was the biggest opening weekend i'd ever be associated with it did pretty well in contrast he said the reaction to the 2014 kim jong-un assassination comedy the interview was more painful people were taking joy and talking a shit about it and really questioning the types of people that would be walking into a movie like that that felt far more personal greenhorn it felt like i had fallen victim which was true to a big fancy thing that was not so much about creative failure on our past but a conceptual failure the interview people treated us like we were creatively failed and which sucked more i just want people to grow up grow up grow up and suck it up part of being a creative part of putting yourself out there online is to receive feedback or comments either end whether it's praise whether it's non-praise and i just don't know why we've kind of reached this point in society with 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 creative especially how it's been democratized and the barrier of entry is so low and there's so many different entry points to get into and the platforms are so easy to use and stuff why on some regards it's made people more sensitive if anything it should make you less sensitive because you know that sometimes even platforms legit you could post a video on facebook and get praise for it then you post on instagram and get panned for it different audiences occupy different platforms and sometimes people just don't like what you do on either platform but it shouldn't stop you from going out there and creating what you want to create especially if it comes from a real place it shouldn't matter if people praise you or they pan you but for some reason we live in just really overly sensitive society where people are quitting touring because they can't handle not getting good ticket sales they are not reading reviews they're deleting their accounts after they drop an album it just feels so bizarre this world that we're living in where these people who are meant to be like performers and amazing um you know artists and stuff are putting stuff out and sometimes it sucks and they're getting annoyed when people tell them it sucks it's like guess guess what but i also do think it just is a general it just speaks to the overall um lack of respect that certain creatives have with fans and i just don't know why that is especially when you think of this art form in itself or just the you know the, the, the aspect of creating or being creative in any kind of sense where you kind of want to make money you're gonna have to connect with the people people are gonna have to like what you do and if they don't like what you do and they say it that shouldn't hurt your feelings it just is what it is maybe make something that they like or focus on just making stuff that you like but this idea that you can control the narrative just because you don't like it is horrendous i hate it so much like one of the one of the reasons one of the people that i hated a lot for it was uh ari lennox the r&b singer incredibly talented but she'd go on these tirades online just complaining and moaning about people having something to say about the song that she put out and not liking the feature or being angsty that she hasn't dropped an album like actual fans hungry to talk to you communicate with you to get more of you you're getting annoyed about it or people that are critical or maybe you know ask you about your lyrics and stuff and you get annoyed and take it personal. I just don't know, man. I just feel like this overly sensitive era we're living in is weird. It's twofold because I think it produces really great art. If you're overly sensitive, there is this idea that you can tap into your emotions more because you're you know more accessible and you can feel them and stuff. But it also kind of leads to so many crybabies, like too many crybabies. And I've just had enough of it. Like just grow up. Like it's not, it's not that big of a deal. People didn't like your movie and it sucked, cool. But you're still a multi-millionaire that lives a life that most people would only dream of living you know the life isn't that bad to be honest there isn't as bad as you're trying to make it seem as but you know what can you do it is what it is